what is good Tesla family it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one only Tesla stock what you should be looking after for the future I'm also going to do some in depth technical analysis and show you guys what on earth the charts are telling us why on earth they look pretty darn good right now and what you should be expecting for the future now before I break anything down before I get into any more details I do have to mention a couple of things real quick firstly I'm not a financial planner so don't take any of this as financial advice and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this it not only benefits me it benefits the entire tesla community as a whole and the last things if you guys can please check out the weeble link down below and in the description if you sign up for weeble the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account you're guaranteed six free stocks each worth up to two thousand dollars and you could always sell these six free stocks for cash and use that cash to buy some tesla shares for free in this limited time offer that ends in just six days so please check it out before they run out with that out of the way let's get on with the video so tesla right now is looking pretty strong based off the chart that we're seeing but there are some indications out there that are suggesting that it's not as strong as some people may think but the majority of them are still looking very very good so what's happening to the markets well if we look at the spy in one of my previous videos okay i was talking about the fact that look the spy wasn't looking that strong going into like yesterday and i did think that we'd see some sideways action today but what happened was i also mentioned that there were two important things to remember one of them is if the spy had a breakout above that 380 dollar range because volume was very dry for the last week volume was not looking pretty good and i mentioned if volume came in we would expect a breakout in either side and either way was possible and right now it ended up pushing to the upside so that looks pretty darn strong now the thing about the spy by kind of pushing up is we actually filled one of these gaps right here there's a gap that actually formed back on the 10th of of june so we ended up actually filling this gap right here around that 390 range now the next key gap for the spy would be right over here around that 401 dollar range and to me it seems more probable that we actually fill that gap instead of actually gapping to the downside and dropping even more because right now we have a lot of momentum and it does look like it's most likely going to continue going into next week just temporarily so one of the other things i want to talk about are these bollingers let me see if these actually pop up and you could see if we actually zoom out a little bit you'll notice that a lot of the times bollingers can get really tight before we see big moves especially like right here we got a big tightening of these bollingers and we ended up seeing this big drop and we saw this big drop relative to the basis line right here and then what happened was i wouldn't say it got that tight it got a little bit tight right here then we started to see that breakout on into the upside so from this perspective looking at the macd we seem to have more room to kind of continue with this momentum and as long as volume continues to stay up we should be set for even more bullish price action and the next key zone for the spy would essentially be that 400 range which would really prompt the market to the upside now for the nasdaq very very similar story and i need to talk about these because they will kind of have this correlation with tesla they will affect it to some degree and you'll see right here uh, we got the tightening of those bollingers we got this breakout to the downside we got all those gaps that formed for the nasdaq then ultimately we got another tightening right here and we're starting to see some more of a push to the upside now when it comes to the way that they're moving if you look at rsi it's also pushing up it's been kind of consistent right here so right here we were almost seeing this this drop right here and we were seeing lots of sideways action because the resistance was just in the way but we ultimately tested it and actually broke out of it so it's looking more bullish than bearish as well for the nasdaq so what do i think is going to happen to nasdaq obviously we have another gap very similar to that of the spy they tend to run almost in unison i mean the whole market essentially or the large majority of stocks are almost running in unison in a way so I do see another gap fill being more probable for the nasdaq it does have a gap down that is something you should be kind of prepared for but right now it seems upside is a little bit more on the probable side so for tesla what on earth does this mean for tesla i think tesla has a, a lot of room to kind of continue moving up but i don't think it's going to move to the uh uh degree or to the exact numbers some people are expecting because there are a lot of people out there that are saying tesla's about to go to 800 it's about to rally it's about to squeeze and there is some truth behind that i do think tesla has room to kind of continue to the upside but i don't think it's going to run that hard and that's really kind of like indicative of how this is moving so far because you could see 
this is starting to resemble almost a very sloppy looking head and shoulders. I mean, it's a little hard to see right here. And we actually formed almost like this. We, we downtrended to that six to six range, got a nice bounce. We're starting to respect an upward trend. And then right here, you could see there was this trap right here that formed that kind of continued to see this upside as volume really started to increase. So Tesla does have a gap down. I think it has a gap down here. Let me actually double check it. We do have a gap down, but I don't see that getting filled that quickly. I think it's like right here. See, it's, it's a very tiny gap, but I don't necessarily see this getting filled that quickly. I just think we have more room to the upside. So where would Tesla move to the upside if we do end up pushing up? And we'd actually have to go back. Let me use the two hour time frame to show you this to write about here. So what you'll notice is that there was a moment in time when Tesla was kind of pushing to the upside and around that, what is that, 772 range, we actually have a gap around that range, 772. And from right there, that's about a 4.7 to 5% move to the upside. And I do think we have the room to do that. Now, are we guaranteed to fill this gap and is Tesla guaranteed to approach 772? The answer is no, but it seems quite probable and one of the reasons I think that is because of the fact that we're testing a very key zone right now. And that's the, the range around $740. You can see we got this rejection, we ended up dropping, but then we made this higher low relative to the lows from before. We're kind of up, upward trending. And on top of that, if we could break out of 740, it's going to look pretty strong, really, really strong. And the next key zone would be that 752 range, kind of like around that zone. And if we're already there, we'd be like halfway there from filling the gap. And it would seem much more probable that we just continue to push up, especially as the SPY and NASDAQ are continuing too. So the last technical indicators I want to talk about are these Bollinger's and then a couple of other ones after. Once again, when I look at these Bollinger's, okay, they kind of give us a very good indication of what the chart could do. I think the five minute might be a little better. Let me try that. Yeah, I think five minute is better for them. What you'll notice is that, look, we get these tightens, these, these big convergences that cause us to really tighten. Then we get this big parabolic moves and a big expansion, kind of like right here when we tightened. And then like right here, for instance, if you go back to like the 21st of, what month is this? Not the 21st, I'm sorry, the, the uh, 17th of June, we got this tight, tight, tight band right here. Look how much it tightened. And we got this big expansion of nice push to the upside following the upper band, which is two standard deviations away from the basis band. And then what's interesting is right about here, let me actually find where that moment was. When we dropped all the way down, right? Tesla ended up actually seeing another tightening right over here. See this tightening? And then we got a breakout followed by that. That's kind of continuing. And we're seeing them to kind of we're seeing them kind of close in a little bit more. And it does look like we have a little bit room to see another prop to the upside because Tesla has this tendency where it trades in a range for like a couple of days and then it pushes up the next leg up. Then it trade it trades in a range, then it pushes up to the next place. And it, because it has that tendency of doing that, it's kind of resembling the, the price action we saw back in like 2021, back in the earlier months of this year, which is just another bullish indicator. Now, from the RSI, there is something a little concerning about it. I think, let me see if I can find it. I think on the five minute time frame, we could use that. Notice how we touched 738, almost 740. One time, we dropped down to like the 720s then we push right back up to about 737. But if you look at the RSI, we were very overbought. And I'm just using the five minute time frame. I think there are better time frames you could use, but it doesn't necessarily matter, right? For the RSI, we were at 82. And then the next time, Tesla ran to the same place, but the RSI, the second time, it, it went up to like 65. So you could argue that that is a bearish indicator. I can't guarantee that. And we did get this crossover from the signal line, but, but we ended up holding up pretty well. So overall, it's doing pretty well. I want to see it hold this range at least 730 by next week. And if we get that breakout above 740, we're most likely going to head to that 750 range. 
And if we if we end up doing that, if we end up testing 750, it becomes more probable we end up testing that 772 to 775 range, and that could be where Tesla ends up going. So be on the lookout for that. It looks like we have some room for more upside. Do I think Tesla is going to do this forever? The answer is no. I'm not saying that this is gonna this is guaranteed to last for the remainder of the year. It's just a temporary relief balance, which is kind of expected considering how much the market was oversold for so long. But overall, I think a more bullish perspective seems more likely. Now, is it possible for us to drop? Yes, it is definitely possible. I just think it's less likely, but it is something you need to be prepared for just in case because we do have these gaps down here and crazy pieces of news and things like that could still kind of trigger some big moves. So overall, more bullish for the next upcoming week. And even if we do end up dropping, even if we do, we could still be respecting a slight upward trend if we are making those lower, I'm sorry, those higher lows, especially if we get a bounce off 650 if this thing were to ever drop that low. So my point is, it looks more bullish than bearish, regardless of which direction we go in for the shorter time frame. Now, obviously, I mentioned in previous videos, in July, the month of July, there could be a lot of things that cause the market to potentially drop. So that's the reason why I'm warning you that even though we look bullish, even though we're pushing up and it, it makes us very happy, it's not guaranteed to last a very long time. It may only last like a week or two. So during this time frame, trade based on what the chart is telling you, be prepared for anything. And just note that July is still going to be a very important month for the year, considering CPI, the FOMC meeting, Fed changes to policy and uh, GDP data are all coming out. With that out of the way, before July starts, we have another week left for June. And I think upside seems more prominent and more likely for the markets, especially for Tesla. With that out of the way, I'm going to actually give you guys my prediction specifically on Sunday. And I really wish the best for each and every one of you. So enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. I will see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon and peace out.